Well, hello there, everybody. Dodgy Gamer here. Welcome back for episode 11 of our Broken Sword Shadows of the Templar Director's Cut playthrough. No intros or anything today. We're just going to speed things along and get straight into it. So we left it last time after the extra episode with Nico investigating and finding out the truth about her father. We're now back with George, who's come to the police station to speak to Mue. Let's get straight into it. Sergeant Mu? Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, let's ask him straight away about Khan. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. He also calls himself Thomas Merlin. I'm sorry, monsieur Stobart. I don't know him. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Momart. I have he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. All right, well, let's come back to two heavies outside like the hotel. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Boom. I'll get them this time. Known to the police, then. Okay, let's go through our items, see what we can get here. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and <laughs> oh, costume. Yes. Then there is nothing to link this man with Typical the Typical observation killing. from the nothing? police. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. Clutching at straws there, George. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way. This could be an important clue. If you say so, monsieur. Would you like to shake my hand, sergeant? Not while I'm on duty, monsieur. The gesture could be misconstrued. See you later, sergeant. It was just some police paperwork, a search warrant. Okay, nothing there for us to take then. We don't need to call Nico, so I think we need to go to the hospital. Here we go, we've made it to the hospital. There was no sign of the crew of the ambulance. Oh dear, I hope nothing happened to them. Alright, let's go inside. Ah, a doctor. The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today, he was working on his withering stare. Well, let's have a chat to the doctor and see what he's got to say. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. These doctors are always a bit arrogant like I'm that. Don't talk to me. Talk Jacques to my Marquet. staff. In which department does he work? He doesn't. He's a patient. I see. You do realize there are strict policies regarding visiting hours, don't you? This is important. I have to talk to Marquet urgently. We make no exceptions to the rules. It's a matter of life and death. The railroad running of this hospital is a matter of life and death. That's true. That's why we have rules. I think I ought to warn you that Marquet is not what he seems. Explain yourself. He's in league with a bunch of guys who want to take over the world. Nonsense. Besides, Marquet's employers have paid in advance for one of our most exclusive private rooms. Could you tell me who Marquet's employers are? Certainly not. Okay, let's see. Is there anything coming out of the items? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir. I do not. 
Look at this, Doc. It's a genuine medieval type gemstone. Yes, so I see. Remarkable. I have to take this gem to Marquet. He might be able to explain its significance. My dear chap, Marquet has other things on his mind right now. Like what? Is kept it there for one. Okay. Alright, so it's worth trying those two out. I doubt anything's going to come out of the remaining items. May I have the honor of shaking you by the hand? You may not. I don't encourage physical contact between my staff. It was worth a try. Thanks for your help. Oh well, we tried the hand buzzer, but nothing else came up with what we were looking for. The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. Well, she appears to be typing stuff up on the computer to me, George. Anyway, let's have a word. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? Uh, we'll be honest. No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. Oops. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. If your instructions were no one, what difference would it make if we're a relative or a close acquaintance? Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Okay, bit graphic in the detail there. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. Alright, let's show the picture. Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. Okay, I don't think any of the other items are going to be useful. We'll just try to shake a hand. I'd like to shake you by the hand. Don't be fresh, young man. It's just a handshake. Come on. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. Oh, there For me? Go. Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Oh, now, nice. let me see. It's a good thing I decided to go through the items after all. He was on Ward B12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh dear, he's on Ward J2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. Okay, let's find out about this Nurse Grendel. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. When they said South American prison, I thought they meant the patients had taken over and the medical staff just stay on the outside. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna, and turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Okay, so the other items didn't bring up anything, but now we need to find J2. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay, off we go. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. Okay. 
Okay. So can we speak to him? Hello. What's that? I said hello. Oh, hi. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know Does it why? always look on the bright you side start of life? Whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. Whoa, whoa, George. It's a deal. Georgie, that, that was a bit uncalled for. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Okay, so he developed the conversation about Mr. Shiny. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. You really need to ask about that, George. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull-through. Right, let's go for calm. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Who is it? That's what I'm asking you. Have you seen him before? How should I know? You haven't told me who he is. Take a look at the photo. Yeah, okay. Now, have you seen him before? No. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was worth it. Okay, I'll quickly try out the other items. Would you like to shake my hand? Not until I've washed, if you don't mind, sir. What does this tissue suggest to you? You have a cold. What you need is vitamin C. Okay, nothing else there then. See you later. Yeah, take care now. Let's see if we can get in this door. Hey now, you can't go Ooh. in there. How that come? We need to I'm go in responsible there. for the contents of that cupboard. Right, so um, hmm, there's the plug. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Ah, oh, poor Mr. Shiny. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Poor Sam. It's upsetting. All right, now we can get in the room and see what's in there. Don't actually have any reason to be going in the room at the moment. But hey, they wouldn't let me go in. So what's happening here? Ah, there we go. Oh, Dr. George. Nice. All right, let's go and find Nurse Grendel then. Oh, there she is. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Nurse. You'll need this, Doctor. Inspection? Uh-oh, what have we got ourselves into here? She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. I don't know what they were talking about. Two things. First of all, the extra complicated directions to get here. It was quite simple. And then they said this this nurse was all strict and horrible. She seems perfectly friendly with Dr. George. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He's in the private room at the end of the ward. 
He has been placed in strict isolation. Oh, isolation, that's the last thing we need to be hearing Why about Why is Marquet now. in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. Ooh, trademark dark humor. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Very diplomatic, George. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, she doesn't recognize him. Does this gem mean anything to you? It's beautiful, but I've never seen it before. Let's see if Merlin's been here. Do you know Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No, I don't. Would you like to shake hands with me? Well... No, it's okay. Forget it. Oh, come on, George. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. This guy didn't look sick to me. He didn't have spots or stitches, and he certainly didn't have a fever. You can tell that from a distance. Hello? Anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. Well, it's not what comes to mind for me when you say sound like a vacuum cleaner. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. Okay, let's try Marquet. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Oh, salty much? Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, Doctor, what's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. <laughs> Oops, chose the wrong option there, George. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, Doctor. Uh, who is it? A cold-blooded killer. Be careful, George. You never know who you're talking to. Let's shake him by the hand. Uh, that is not a good idea. Well, at least in this case, George has a conscience. Right, we needed to take his blood pressure. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. I don't know. Whenever I've had my blood pressure taken, it's never been a doctor that's done it. Always a nurse. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Okay, whoops, we're about to blow our cover, I think. Okay, didn't come up I'll with anything there. Let's later. see if we can get into this room with Marquet. Take the long walk around. It's so one thing in this Doctor. director's cut. Oh, he's not letting us go. Why is that? What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Yeah. Okay, he doesn't like the way we do it. <laughs> Georgie boy, you don't have any idea what you're doing. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. You need one of those uh, automated ones that you just strap around the, whip, the wrist and let it do itself. Right, I think the nurse said we need to speak to the Dr. Hagenmeier, so let's go and see.
see if anything was going to work for us there. But yeah, I was just going to say one thing I'm not a fan of in this director's cut is how the windows pop up to show the faces of the people who are speaking and I notice George in the game his mouth is moving and he's talking but in the portrait this is his not so let's uh, let's see if if we get a, a look at that here excuse me sir aha just the man you must be the new boy okay he doesn't recognize uh, us yeah, from like I five be. minutes ago well uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful bunny come here boy bunny nice name for a doctor this is benoit my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Uh, sure, why not? He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. <laughs> Alright. Let's have a word with our new doctor then. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Yes, sir. It's very excited. So, what's your name, kid? Benoit. They call me Bunny. Bunny? Jeez, and you don't mind? Oh, I've gotten used to it. Okay, Benoit. You're gonna help me. Anything you say, sir. Chris Benoit. I'm surprised they still use his name in the game. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, miss. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about taking Always wash your hands. Patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. You have to explain yourself a bit much there. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? And no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. You'll develop the arrogance on the job. Shake my hand, Benoit. I don't think that's a good idea, sir. How come? Dermatitis. Well, I don't have dermatitis. I do. <laughs> okay, well thanks for letting us know. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. I've never seen him before. I guess we're going to ask this guy to do the blood pressure for us. Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, uh, keep it safe until I think of something. Well, we've already thought of something. I'll just check the other items out and then we'll get on with it. Okay, nothing came Follow up me, there. Benoit. I'm right behind so you, sir. Let's make our way back to the ward. There we go, Benoit's going to do the job. So I guess we'll have to talk here first and just explain the junior doctor's going to do it Hi, for us. me again. I'll come back later. Okay, I guess we don't need to talk to him. We need to talk hey, to Benoit. the doctor. Yes, sir. Do you still have that gauge I gave you? Ah, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. There we go. I guess that leaves us free to make our way around. And visit Mark A. Ah. There's a guard to speak to first. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, doctor. All right, let's ask him about Marquet. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, doc, right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has anthrax. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. You can see the thing I was talking about a bit more clearly here, that now that George hasn't got his back turned to us, but he talks. Here, he moves, his mouth moves, and but in the portrait it doesn't. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No, this was a tatty old bear. How is the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? 
No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. All right, let's ask him about calm. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I have never seen him before. All right, I'll check out the other items. We'll start with the hand buzzer. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection? No. We're trying the hand buzzer and the greasy tissue with everyone. What does this tissue suggest to you? It looks as if it has been used to wipe Satan's butt. <laughs> okay, I hate to say it, but you could be right. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. Is he going to let us go in? Yes. He's just warning us away. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? No, I Get think we're an assassin. Over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. I thought you were one of the Hashashin. <laughs> Hashashin. Not me. I never me. inhaled. Sounds like he's so, on his way out. You were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. You have it? Not yet, but it's being taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any yeah, chance? I think we've met them already. No, Zeb. For Klausner, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? Of course they do, George. As a theory about the location of the. That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Bit of a cold attitude there, George. And there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter! Wait a minute. Benoit didn't know the patients. The door's locked! Didn't know the Help patients me, or the nurses, but he knows the doctors. <laughs> Stand back, monsieur! Oh, wow. We've got the gun out. Okay, well, George got out of it, but I don't know how. Hello, George. So he was in a very suspicious situation there. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus George, doctor. George, you were, you were a bogus doctor in there. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? Oh, no, the irony. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me, that guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Right, Khan. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. 
He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Josh. I'd be too tempted to sell it. Right, I guess we need to go to the museum, as uh, that's where the tripod is. Well, that's where we've seen it already. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mu? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. Okay, bit curt there, George. Alright, so I'm going to wrap up today's episode there. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit that like button if you have. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And let me know what you think of the story so far. And your memories of this classic game if you've played it before. Or your impressions of it if you're seeing it for the first time. But for now, I'm Dodgy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.